The Libya conflict is entering its fifth month with concerns growing that a protracted, destructive civil war has been kick-started by a Western rush to regime change. Thierry Messan, a French intellectual and journalist, founder and chairman of uh, Voltaire Network and the Access for Peace conference, has been working here in Libya trying to find out the truth. Thank you very much, Thierry, for being with us. Merci. Thank you. Where have you been in Libya and uh, what have you discovered? What have you found in your time here? First of all, it's quite obvious that the USA wanted to enter the war at the same time with Libya and Syria. That wish was made public by John Bolton in 2002. The plan was passed over to France and Britain, who decided to bring it to life in November last year. Secondly, it was necessary to verify whether an attempt of a coup had been made before that, a coup that could be organized by France or Britain. The attempt failed in October. After this failed attempt, another coup was planned. It envisaged killing all all the heads of the Libyan National Congress, if they got together in one place during a big celebration. That failed, though, because the situation in the region changed after the revolutions in Tunisia and Egypt. At that moment, France and Britain decided to carry out a PR operation and present this coup attempt as a people's rebellion. What was the aim of this regime change? Every member of the coalition pursues their own particular goal. It is necessary that everyone should be interested in the war. However, in terms of basic goals, it is worth noting changes that have started in Africa, like those which began in large areas of the Middle East. There are already two zones being created. First of all, it was decided to create a West African zone with Ivory Coast as its center, which corresponds to the ancient Mali Empire, which in fact explains the French intervention in Ivory Coast. After that, it was planned to obtain a considerable part of Northern Africa, except Egypt. The latter, being part of Northern Africa, will represent another bloc. In case all states are divided, control would be spread first to Morocco, and if Northern Africa is revamped, a conflict would have to be created, not between Shiites and Sunnis, as was a attempted in the Middle East, but between Arabs and the Berbers. This is where the real source of the events in Benghazi is. Are civilians dying in Libya? Indeed, starting from the moment it was decided to launch this operation, the lives of civilians were not taken into account. Everything we used to see in the Middle East is not transpiring in this region. And this is just the beginning. It is rather a question of the rearrangement of this region. And we are yet to see a series of wars. NATO has only admitted nine civilian deaths. This is sheer nonsense and mockery over common sense. In this case, NATO keeps lying at every stage, which is surprising because during the war in Kosovo, NATO would normally lie only to conceal its mistakes. This time, it's being done not to conceal mistakes, but to conceal the strategy. So what's the, the strategy? The initial goal of this strategy was to overthrow the people's government that was in power and to establish Western authoritarianism in the country. I believe, though, that they had actually given up the plan because the military resistance proved stronger. Therefore, it was decided to act in a different direction. Besides, Western TV channels don't speak of repression and rebellion anymore, but of a civil war thus trying to prepare public opinion for a declaration that there is a need to divide the country into two parts, Cyrenaica on one side and Tripolitani on the other, with UN forces in between, to separate the conflicting parties. They will say they were protecting the civilian population, and that is enough. And now they are deploying forces to separate the conflicting sides.
Then they will declare Cyrenaica's independence, set up the biggest regional U.S. military base, saying it's necessary, because, you know, they decided to start conquering Africa. They're planning to set up a base in Benghazi to land and deploy their troops there, and in about 10 years to start conquering Africa. There is an even more serious problem. NATO has begun a campaign on destroying the psychological resistance of the country's leaders. This campaign envisages killing their families. But they can't reach them, because they never stay in the same place, and they are protected. So spies are sent to put beacons on their homes, and children's bedroom could be a target. It's a systemic method of pointed liquidation, children apparently being the main target. The task is to intimidate the parents. How do you think? Will it work? Will they achieve their goals eventually? In terms of conquering Cyrenaica, this has already been a success. If, on the other hand, they want to go beyond, that is absolutely impossible. A mass demonstration took place in Tripoli, and we saw the crowd. It was huge. We take into account the population figures. It was incredible. All were there. Now all those people are armed. It would be absolutely insane to bring troops into Tripoli. It would lead to infinite slaughter. What you are saying is, is terrible, it's shocking. So do you think uh, the truth, this truth, could ever be established, could ever be recognized? I think that the lies have begun to dissipate, at least to some extent. For instance, by the time of the UN Security Council vote, everyone decided on the basis of reports submitted to the Council. And the Security Council was certain that during the riots and demonstrations in Benghazi that grew into riots, the government killed 6,000 citizens, a terrible number. But now, five months later, the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court, which accused the Libyan leadership, has reduced the number after many inspections. It has been proven that the previous number was wrong. Now the prosecutor is building up his evidence on 208 victims instead of 6,000. Several more inspections will turn out that there were no victims at all. What happened in Benghazi is quite different from what we were told. In fact, it was a staged event. Moving to Syria now, uh, you say that a Western-imposed asset freeze could bring down the Syrian government and cast the country into civil war. Is Syria so vulnerable? As for Syria, that is another question, because Syria is a state with a strategic position in the Middle East. What is interesting in this affair is to see that the operation in Syria and the operation in Libya have been designed exactly the same way and should normally have ended with the same war on both sides. But they let go of Syria. And I think that some states, Russia included, thought better of it and prevented the course of those operations. So that is why, at the moment, there is no war in Syria, even if some Western leaders repeat almost every day that it is necessary to go to war. One of the characteristics of the system is to have Islamist extremists on the spot. Let us say networks known as being those of Al-Qaeda. And I use this term on purpose, as there are some chiefs of those units we see here who are known for having fought in Afghanistan, in Bosnia, Herzegovina, in Chechnya, in Iraq, now in Syria or Libya. Some of them in the meantime have been detained for years in Guantanamo, freed by the United States and brought on the spot to continue the fight. So here the technique is always the same. They seize cities which are easy to supply, located either on the coast or on the border, then they spread terror in the town with snipers. They commit spectacular crimes of violence and barbarism which scare the whole population and they announce the creation of an Islamic emirate in the city. The idea is to create bastions which can be used after to penetrate further inside the country. You can check it's happening like that because, for example, in Syria there have been various combat zones. Actually, all these zones are located on the borders. There has never been any fight inside, absolutely never. And here in Libya, the events which broke out began also in coastal areas, allowing supplies and preventing these emirates from being surrounded. 
Has international mainstream media upheld its responsibility to the people of Libya? It really happens several times a day that when something happens, journalists are brought to the site to show them, after which they make their reports telling quite different things than they witnessed. For example, a farm was shelled several days ago. Nobody knew why, perhaps it was a mistake. Journalists were brought to show them what happened. All confirmed it was a farm. Full stop. On the day that followed, the footage was shown on many satellite channels with captions that it had been shot in Misurat and that Gaddafi's troops had caused the destruction, despite what the journalists had seen with their own eyes. Exactly which channel? El Arabiya was the first channel to do that. It is a U.S. finance channel belonging to Saudi Arabia and based in the United Arab Emirates. The same report was repeated by many other satellite channels. But this is deliberate falsification. Also, we saw a CNN report not long ago from a mobile phone about Gaddafi's soldiers raping women. It was surely no pleasure to see the footage, so some frames were blurred. It turned out, though, that someone recognized the audio as being from a Libyan porno movie. There are not so many Libyan porno movies, so that one was widely known. So that fragment was used to claim it had been a rape by Gaddafi's troops. It was a deliberate montage, not a mistake. The USA demanded that the satellite broadcasts of Libyan channels are stopped all over the world. They have already shut down the Arabsat channels, despite Libya being a stakeholder. And now they are shutting down Nilesat to prevent Libya's version being heard in the Arab world. They have already shut them down on other satellites broadcasting to other countries. Thierry, thank you very much for being with us. We wish you good luck here. Thank you.